Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So in this module, I'm going to take a look at the project we're going to be using for the, the Spring Core DevOps course. So this course really isn't to teach you how to develop in Spring. It's more about how to deploy Spring projects. So I've set up an application. It's a pretty simple web application, fairly typical of Spring. You're going to recognize some of the code if you take my other courses. I took the, the web front end from my, my Spring Timeleaf course, and then I've also added in Spring Data JPA and a little bit of JMS, and it's all being managed by Spring Boot and a fairly typical use pattern. What I'm going to do here in this module is step you through the code and just get you familiar with the code base and what's going on there. This is not an in-depth course on Spring development, but I do want to get you familiar with the project because we're going to be building this project and modifying this project to deploy to different environments and this will be the basis for everything that we do going forward in the course. So let's jump over to IntelliJ and I'll, I'll show you that project now. Okay, so what we have here is a, a basic Spring Boot application. And we're going to be looking at two primary pieces of this. One will be the index controller. And this will, will go and get a list of products and show us a list of products. And then the, the second portion is going to be the product controller that we're going to be interested in and this is going to show us a specific product so what we want to do here is take a look at what's going on we do have a product service show you that that's implements an interface and we'll jump over to the implementation of that now this product service it uses spring data jpa product repository and let's go take a look at that real quick so this is a simple crud repository that we have set up and I got that in the package repositories. We have a pretty simple domain model. It's just product, product category, and author. Nothing too complex here on the domain. Now, product service, the, the one nuance I've added to that is I've added in a JMS service. And in major e-commerce applications, it's pretty common to track a, a user's browsing history and send that off to some type of messaging system or their search history. And this history is going to be used to do like future product recommendations. So that's pretty common to do in a, in a large e-com system. So that's what I'm trying to simulate here. And I also want to give us the opportunity to work with JMS. So this is a real, real simple JMS implementation. I actually stole it out of my Spring Core Advanced course. And let's take a quick look at that. And that's in services JMS. Now, the service implements an interface to send a message. And then here we have the actual implementation of that service. And it takes in a text message, a string message, and then through Spring's JMS template, we're going to convert that to a JMS message and send that off. And then I have here the listener. Again, this is using Spring's JMS support. He's going to listen on that text message queue and just print out the message to the council. Nothing too complex here, but we, we want to see the JMS stuff happening. Now, the other nuance I have here is a bootstrap class. Now, we're going to be using, initially, we're going to be using an H2 in-memory database. And this is used to initialize that database. So this class gets run when the Spring Context comes up and is ready. It's going to fire off this class. We wire up the repositories in it. And then this big ball of code here, which isn't the prettiest thing, uh, it loads up our, our data for testing. So that when you're doing spring development, this is pretty common to do where you load up a set of known test data. So I'm going to start this up right now. And like any other spring, spring boot application, I do have a, a class here. And I can just come over here, right-click on it in IntelliJ, and say Run. Now we're going to see spring starting up. Now the startup on spring is going to be a little bit longer. Uh, than just a simple Spring Boot application because we are bringing up Hibernate. We are bringing up an embedded ActiveMQ container. We can see that that just came up and it started up. And we can see that now that the application has started up and it's listening on port 8080. So let's toggle over to the browser. I'm going to show you the application. So this is the application. I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. Just a simple catalog. Stole this from my, my website showing off showing you some of my courses, simple data model, which is really fine for our purposes. Now I can click on this and we go into this. Now I want to show you in the console here. 
Now, as I, I go around here, we can see the JMS message is firing. So that proves to us that the, the JMS messages are firing. You can see that on the bottom of the window as I, I toggle around. If I refresh it, that's a controller action. And so we're going to be firing off that JMS message. Okay, so this is a pretty simple Spring Boot project using a lot of the typical players that we see with inside of Spring. So we have Spring, we have Time Leaf, we also have a little bit of Spring Security in there. We have Spring Data JPA. We're using Spring Boot to manage everything for us. And we do have an active MQ container in there, an embedded broker that's configured and managed by Spring Boot and an H2 embedded database. So as we move forward in this course, we will be able to use Spring profiles and externalize properties and things like that, where we can start taking this, this application and employing it to different, different environments. So we're not going to be making a lot of changes to this application in terms of spring and functionality wise. Like I said, this course is not focused on spring application development, but it's more about taking the spring application and managing it in multiple environments. So we're going to be doing some neat stuff with that. It opens up a lot of stuff that we can do. And I'm looking forward to showing you how we can utilize this, this simple project going forward in multiple environments and using the features in spring to do so.